the Laplace equation. Consider sphere of radius r. The total outward force is equal to p in 4 pi r squared. The total inward force is equal to p out 4 pi r squared plus gamma dA, which is equal to p out 4 pi r squared plus gamma 8 pi r. At mechanical equilibrium, the two forces are equal. Hence, pi in 4 pi r squared is equal to p, pi, uh, p out 4 pi r squared plus 8 pi r gamma. This implies p in minus p out is equal to 2 gamma over r. The Laplace equation. A more general form for shapes other than a sphere, such as a shape with two radii of curvature, R1 and R2, is P in minus P out is equal to gamma, open bracket, open bracket again, 1 over R1, close bracket, plus, open bracket, 1 over R2, close bracket, close the main bracket. For an air bubble, delta P is equal to 4 gamma over R. This is because an air bubble has got two surfaces, the inner and the outer. As a consequence of surface tension, the vapor pressure of a small droplet is higher than that of a flat surface. High surface area of a volume ratio as compared to the flat surface. So Vp is greater than P0 for the droplets, whereas for the flat surface, Vp equals P0. Look at that diagram. We have a capillary immersed into a liquid. The pressure above the flat part of the liquid is P0, but the pressure at the curved interface, Vp, is less than P0. This is at the meniscus as shown in the diagram. The Kelvin equation. Suppose the end moles of a liquid from a flat surface condense on a droplet of liquid, as shown in the diagram, that is dn moles are transferred to the droplet. This transfer costs energy. The area of the drop increases and hence the surface free energy, gamma dA, increases too. Let the radius of the drop increase from R to R plus dr. The surface area will increase from 4 pi R squared to 4 pi, open bracket, R plus dr, close bracket, squared. That is by 8 pi R dr. The surface free energy will increase by 8 gamma pi R dr. Let the number of moles transferred be dn and the pressure at the planar surface be P0. Let the pressure at the drop be PR. From thermodynamics, we know that the free energy increase is given by dn RT, natural log of open bracket, PR over P0, close bracket. If we assume ideal gas behavior 
and equate the two, we have the NRT natural log of PR over P0 is equal to 8 gamma pi RDR. But the N is equal to pi R squared dr rho over capital N. Consequently, RT natural log of PR over P0 is equal to 2 gamma M over rho R, which is equal to 2 gamma Vn over R. Here, rho is the density of the liquid, Vm is the molar volume of the liquid, M is the molar mass of the liquid. As a consequence of the Kelvin equation, we have several phenomena. Here is an example of water droplets. If we compare the radius of the droplet in meters to the partial pressure PR over P0, we find that when the radius is 10 to the minus 6 meters, the relative pressure is 1.001. When it's 10 to the minus 7, the, rel the relative pressure becomes 1.01. .01. When it's 10 to the minus 8, PR over P0 is 1.1. .1. When it's 10 to the minus 9, PR over P0 jumps to 3.0. It can be seen that as the droplet drastically reduces in radius, the relative pressure increases drastically too. Also, as a consequence of the Kelvin equation, smaller particles are more soluble than large ones. This is shown in the aging of colloidal particles, where small particles dissolve and large ones grow at their expense. 2. In mist, large droplets grow at the expense of the small ones. Why do liquids rise in capillaries? Let's try to answer this question. But before that, there are some interesting practical experiences. For instance, nappies get soaked with urine, and also when you use blotting paper, the sucking of the ink by the blotting paper. What are the causes? If liquid-liquid interactions are less than liquid-solid interaction, then this will happen. This is because the liquid wets the surface and also in small capillaries the meniscus is concave and hence the pressure above the meniscus tends to be less than the pressure at a plane surface. The equation of young Laplace be becomes uh, operational in this situation. If we look at this diagram, we find that a capillary is immersed in water. Again, the vapor pressure at the flat surface is P0. Now, if we look at the meniscus, if P dashed is the pressure below the meniscus and P double dashed is the pressure above it, capital R is the radius of curvature of the meniscus while lowercase r is the radius of the capillary. Theta is the contact angle. If we look at the second diagram, you straight away can see that cos theta is equal to lowercase r over capital R.
Now, if theta is less than 90, then liquids wet the surface. Consequently, the meniscus is concave. However, if theta is greater than 90, the meniscus is convex. Concave meniscus implies capillary rise. This is because P dashed under the curve is less than P double prime above it. But P double prime is equal to P naught. So the liquid rises until the weight of the liquid comb just balances the difference across the curved meniscus. Measurements of surface tension using the capillary rise. Consider the figure below. Remember cos theta is equal to lowercase r over capital R from the diagram above. From the Young Laplace equation, P is equal to 2 gamma cos theta over R. If capillary rise is H, the density of air is rho naught and the density of the liquid is rho. The weight of the liquid column is pi r squared g h open bracket rho minus rho naught close bracket. The force per unit area balancing the pressure difference is g h open bracket gamma uh, rho minus rho naught close which therefore implies open bracket 2 gamma cos theta close over r is equal to gh open bracket rho minus r rho naught. Consequently gamma is equal to a half open bracket gh into open bracket rho minus rho naught close bracket close the second bracket r all divided by cos theta. However, correction must be added for the liquid above the meniscus. The meniscus is a hemisphere, hence its volume is given by A is equal to two-thirds pi r cubed. The volume of liquid is volume of a cylinder, radius r, height r, minus volume of the hemisphere, which is pi r cubed minus two thirds pi r cubed, which implies that gamma is equal to g into rho minus rho naught close bracket r into h plus r over three in bracket, close the major bracket. This is a very accurate method of surface tension measurement. It is accurate to 2 in 10 to the 4. 